Hello, hello, friends and fellow learners. Uh, I'm here with another clip on this bisection method how to write a simple function to perf to solve a nonlinear equation using the bisection method. In my previous video, I look at creating a simple script that can help us to be able to solve a nonlinear equation using the bisection method. And today we'll be looking at how to create a simple function that way you can use it over and over and over again. So let's dive into it right from here. So first of all, we create a function, we call, we write a function, and then we said okay create an array which um, array is going to display, uh, display the output so this one is the output what you, we want the function to display and then we are saying that okay then now function name should be called to what bisect m you can give it any name but you must not give give the function a name that is already a name of an inbuilt function as it's going to have we are going to have some challenges so you have to use a name that does not conflict with any of the inbuilt names. So the name of my function for this bisection method is bisect m. And then looking at the argument as if a, b, f, and tolerance, that's t, t o l. My a is the initial guess value, and the b is the final guess value. And my f is the function that I want to work. I want to solve to I want or I want to find the root for and then the tolerance a certain tolerance so from there line 4 is just to clear the screen I mean the command window so coming to line 5 line 5 we say okay now we want to know the number of times the, given the certain tolerance and then this input a and b we want to know the number of times that we need to perform iteration to obtain convergence then we said okay now to find that knowing that we have to have a log b minus a minus log of the tolerance all divided by log 2 and then we use the round function to give us the nearest integer yeah. so from there then we said okay line 7 says okay what I want to do is I want to check if the interval that I'm giving a and b my roots can be found within that interval so first of all I said okay now if the functional value of a times the functional value of b is negative then it gives me a hint that my roots lies within the interval so I can go ahead and do my bisection that's what this line is telling us if the least is, then I can go ahead and do my bisection and when I come to line 9, then I can, I say, let me go straight ahead and do Okay, so what happens, let me bring your mind back, if the root exists between this interval, then I'm saying, okay, do everything within from line 8, from line 9 to line 20 when this condition for tell the person okay else tell the person that okay no solution found within that interval so what happens if this condition is true then we are saying okay now with then with the value n value that we have here once we now go ahead and perform our iteration to get the approximate value so we say from our i starting from one to n all that we want to is what okay first of all we find we bisect to find the midpoint, which is our c. We check the functional value of c, which is the midpoint. When our c is not equal to zero, then it means we can still go ahead and perform and do some assignment. I will explain this one. But if this if our c is equal to zero, then come and tell the user to display the output. That solution found equal is what num to string. So before, since c is a is, is, is a value and what we have is string, 
we convert the number that we have here convert number to string so that's what it means so that everything that we have in an array here will be what in it will be in string so we need okay so from then we we are saying back to line 11 we are saying if our solution if our functional value the functional value of that's f of c if it's not equal to zero then we said okay now let's come again the value the c value that we have here we check the functional value if the functional value of f of a times the functional value of f of c is less than zero then we are confident that our root lies within this two interval so if the if the root lies within this a and c then it means our b is not needed again so for computational purpose we want to assign our c value to b so that's an assignment here but if this condition fails we are saying that okay now we want to then it, if this condition fails, then it tells us that our root lies between our B and C. So our all the old A is not needed again. And like I said, for computational purpose, then we do a new assignment by assigning our C value to our A. So we'll continue with the iteration. After it is that this condition is, is satisfied, then you go back again and continue to perform the iteration until we happen to get to the final value that's the final iteration that's the n times so this is a simple code for bisection method a function code for bisection method so we want to demonstrate it and see how it works so first of all if you like can have our a b to be equal to two our b to be equal to 3 our f so I already have the f function somewhere here so that's right so this is how to write we say okay f this anonymous function should be assigned to f so then to write this anonymous function we have what the function name anonymous function name should be equal to what the at which tells us that okay we want the the argument that we'll be supplying should is going to what the what the function is going to take is what x if you have y then you have to also specify the y value at what inside this bracket here so since it's only x that we are going to we will be dealing with then we have to only specify the x here and this is the actual function that we'll be dealing with that's three to the power uh, s cube minus what 11 so i can also suppress it okay so having this one so assuming our tolerance is something like uh, 0 0.001 then okay i forgot to also suppress that one but it's nothing then we all that we have to do from here is want to now enter a call the function which the function is for bisect m so if it is a function then once you write it you have to is yeah so that's our by our function name then we supply our a b f and our tolerance i pray that it works but okay it's saying okay change the matlab folder current folder or add it to the matlab path so okay quickly okay now um, so i want to clear the screen to clear the screen i just do this and we already have our a b and f and tolerance already stored so let me call the function again the function name okay then we have seen our a b the suggestion that a b f and then tolerance which we have it to be a b you can give them any name so we have our f and our tolerance 
so let's run it okay so it tells us our n is 10 and our answer is 2.22367 we can do something but here we have already declared a function that our output should be assigned to c n so let's go back and check something here we can still do the same thing here so we say okay we have our bracket here we have our c value we have our n equal to so let's see what's going to give us enter okay so it's telling us that okay here yeah, that's okay so it's telling us our c what we have computed we is telling us our c value which is the solution is what 2.2236 and now the number of iteration that it has performed is what 10. that's pretty simple so let's do another check and see something see something see something so assuming i have my maybe i say my a should be equal to four and maybe i said okay i have d to be equal to maybe five instead of saying b i said d and i have okay assuming we are using the same function and then uh, maybe our tolerance should be equal to 0 0.00001 suppress it using the same function we call our function name again by sec okay by sec m i have okay this time around i'm saying b a D F and taller and tall. So let's see what it's going to tell us. Ah, no solution found. So it has displayed our N, which is the end that we have here. Sorry, we didn't suppress this one. But I've suppressed it here. It's telling us there's no solution found. So let me run it again. This time around. No solution found. And then if we should go back, assuming we want to use our old A. So let's see what it's going to give us. Ah, it say output argument C and may and may be others not assigned during call to bisect M. So we clear our screen. I want to use the same function. You can. Yeah. So all I'm trying to say is we can try a couple of your you can try your hands on a couple of questions as well and see how it really works. So we have come to the end of this lesson and then if it has been of help to you please don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the like button and share. God bless you. Enjoy it. Bye.